Back to Spider. So Spider's a dog, right, Spider? <laughs> yeah, Spider's a dog. Um, so he's coming to you. What type of, what would you have instituted with Spider with the story? You know, Ozzy did a wonderful thing, adopted him from a foster family. Um, what, would, what would your recommendation have been for Spider? So with does he have to be hospitalized during this process? Can this yeah, be done at home? Yeah, so usually they, they are. So if the animal is first diagnosed, we talk with um, the pet parent about diet. And so depending on the animal, we're going to change their diet. With dogs, high fiber in their diet seems to help with diabetes. So we may change them to a diabetic diet that's appropriate for whether they're a cat or a dog. We'll also talk about weight loss. So if they're overweight, we're trying to get them to obviously lose weight if they're thin we're you know we're trying to make sure they're not continuing to lose weight um, and then we start insulin and insulin therapy if we're using insulin um, it, the type of insulin that we use and the amount varies for each individual pet um, typically there are some insulins we use with dogs more frequently and some that we use with cats more frequently just based on studies yeah. but we would start them on insulin and we actually we have, actually have we're really lucky to have a veterinary approved Yes, labeled insulin yes. for both dogs and cats, yes, yeah. which is great because we know what we're doing and we know that the companies are behind us if yeah. there's a problem. So and, and that's more recent too. Yeah, we didn't yeah. used to always have that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, then we start them on insulin. The insulin is usually started twice a day, and most of the time, and there's some variation again depending on the pet. But usually they're started on insulin and then monitored very closely the first 24 to 48 hours, and that can be done in a hospital setting or sometimes depending on the pet parent and the communication with the veterinarian. Sometimes that's done at home, but I would say a lot of times it's in the hospital. And the reason for that initially is to monitor doing serial blood glucose checks, and that's looking for hypoglycemia. So once insulin is started, we're looking to make sure we don't lower the blood sugar too low. If that's the case, then the insulin level may be lowered or adjusted. Um, we usually don't go up at all with insulin right away because it takes takes the body a while. So, um, so they, again, it takes the body a while, what do, you, what do you mean? It takes the body a while to adjust to being on the insulin, so we don't want to make any quick moves in terms of increasing insulin, but we will right. lower it That's an important point. Low. I think people sometimes get impatient and they want, they want them regular right away. There is something called glucose toxicity, yes. which after, you know, let's say he was diabetic for at least probably weeks, maybe months mm -hmm. prior to his diagnosis, mm -hmm. so his body will take a while to get used to yep. insulin, and he will actually become more sensitive to, to insulin in three or four or five days than he was on day one. So we can't, that's why you were saying we can't just hit them hard yep. with insulin on day one because then it's going to be too much. And, say, and same with the diet, too. Yep. We're also implementing yep. a diet change, and that's another thing that's going to mm -hmm. happen as their weight mm -hmm. changes, as they have a better diet that's controlling their regular blood sugar after they eat. Same thing, so that insulin level can change. So initially, we're really watching to make sure that they're okay, that they don't have a dangerous hypoglycemic or low blood sugar incident, and then we'll actually send them home. Um, and again, ideally, I'm talking to the pet parent also about home monitoring, so yeah. watching them at home when they go home. So, Ozzy, mm -hmm. how did you take all this news? Was that the same type of news that was given to you? Uh, yeah. Um, with Charlie and with Spider, I'm guessing. Um, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I, I learned that with, uh, with Charlie. Charlie stayed um, at the hospital for um, actually a Saturday, mm -hmm. and that's what they did. They mm -hmm. told me that they'd be... Um, starting him in the morning um, um, and measuring basically his glucose level every hour until from 7 to 5 o'clock. And when I picked him up, they had a very interesting graph that it showed exactly when his uh, sugar falls, and that's when I need to be giving him insulin. Um, so and that's you were later said. able to, we'll get to this, but you were later able, able to generate those kind of graphs at home too, right? Um, absolutely, with the right tools and mm -hmm. a bit of education and some practice um, within two weeks. You could actually do that at home. Absolutely, that's I was wonderful. doing that in two weeks, yeah. All right, but back to, back to when he was first diagnosed. So they talked to you about changing his diet, they talked to you about insulin. What, was the, what were kind of the hardest things that went through your mind? I know you, it took you 24 hours to assimilate yes. with, with Charlie. Um, um, I think um, the first question is that after the shock is uh, kind of gone, um, it's what do I do? Give me a good step. Tell me what I should look for um, and tell me how to manage it. When do I call you? I think the first two weeks I was calling my veterinarian every day. Um, 
which I guess is understandable. That's yep. normal. It's okay. Nobody should panic. And, and we'd rather have you call Absolutely. us than not. Definitely. So I did. I call a lot. And after two weeks, when I kind of got the answers with uh, the much of patient of my veterinarian, I kind of knew what to look for. Um, I did change the, uh, the diet. He's on um, he's on a, a proper diet. Um, but also getting used to the idea of giving the shot, making it uh, part of your life, just like you drink water, just like you get up and do your mm -hmm. workout or you go to work. Um, it's very much like that. I, I know that uh, his life is depending on it, and um, that's the first thing I think about. Um, it really doesn't, it's not life-changing. Um, it it's just becomes part of the routine in your life, that's all. So you were able to start with a different diet, you started with insulin, and you even started home monitoring. Um, yeah, that came in a couple of weeks later, but uh, yes, as soon as I got comfortable with giving insulin um, and changing a diet, which is really not that difficult, it's, mm -hmm. I think, I talk to my friends and family and I, um, I know everybody always, uh, you know, tries different things or if there's a skin problems, they get a new diet. So that wasn't a, a big change for, for me or for Charlie at the time, but um, uh, just getting comfortable with the idea of giving insulin shots. Um, that's that's something I hear a lot. I think a lot of people are initially afraid of, oh my God, do you want me to give the yeah, shot at yeah. home? How am I gonna do that? Yeah, we're gonna and go over that conversation <laughs> in, in just a minute, but yeah. you know, when we think about people with diabetes, you know, how, how would human endocrinologists love for people to eat exactly what they tell them to? You know, <laughs> yes. We're lucky that we can say, eat this, it's palatable, you like it, and it's good for you, it's good for your diabetes. It's different with people. Um, very true. Um, I, for one, think it's uh, so much easier for me to uh, control his diabetes. Uh, and if I had one, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> Completely. Yeah, you'd, you'd be fine. You'd be fine. <laughs> All right. Well, great. Well, thank you.